Happy New Year! Happy, happy, happy New Year. God has been so good to us. We have come to our second year of being in the Word of Empowerment. Amen. I do not own the rights to the music, so before we get started with all of that, uh, I want to uh, let you guys know we have some Chicago singers, the Soul Seekers, and I love this song, Trouble in My Way. So this is what we're going to start with. So let's get started with a little bit of music. Amen. So we're going to get ready to invite everybody in. Hello, Dewan. Happy New Year. Hey, my cousin Deidre. I love you, Kina. My backbone. Amen. In so many different ways. Amen. So glad to see my sister Angelia. I'm going to take a minute mm -hmm. and begin to invite some folks in so that we have a listening audience. Amen. This is a new year, a new start, a new beginning, and we need to let new people know, hey, the word of empowerment is still going forth. So let's get ready to invite some folks. Amen. Soul seekers, trouble in my way. Hope you guys enjoy. This Chicago, y'all. It sounds a little Mississippi or Tennessee, but this Chicago. Amen. Just going to take a few minutes and invite some folks in. Hopefully, amen, we have those that will come along with this. Maybe have fell off sometimes throughout the year. Amen. But we want to let everybody know. So if you can, hit that share button. Let somebody know, hey, the word of empowerment is going for us. What better way to start the year than it started with the word of God? What better way to start the year with allowing God to minister to your heart to help you that you may prosper in him? That you may grow in him, that you may know him, and that you, most of all, you may experience him. So we're going to get ready, amen. We're inviting folks, amen. I want you to prepare your hearts and minds so we can go forth with the word, amen. Invite somebody, let them know this is the time, amen. You may say, well, I have to work on Sunday or I, I can't make it to Sunday school. Hey, Sunday school's been brought to you. You don't have any excuse now. So let's get into the word together. We're going to get started. Amen. We just have a couple folks, amen, I know, ask me specifically to tag them in. Amen. But I'm hoping that we can get some of them that amen, may have uh, went the other way. Come on back. Let's get this word together. Amen. We're not going to be long. So glad to see you, Troy. Amen. Nick. Amen. So good to see my Auntie Vivian. We're going to get started. We're going to get in and we're going to get out. Amen. So let's begin first, amen, by going to the throne of God. Lord God, we come to bless you and to lift you up. We thank you, Lord God, for being a way maker. We thank you, Lord God, for being the love of our life and loving us even before we loved ourselves. We thank you, God, for the measure of faith that you have dealt to every man. And even, God, when we do not understand or know, God, how we're making it through, let us understand that you are growing and nurturing our faith. So let our faith be fear, God. Let our faith, Lord God, help us to face the trials of tribulations that we go through. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all pray and let us all say amen. Amen. So let me, amen, turn, uh, pause our soul seekers on there. I love you, Sister Connie. Amen. And we're going to get ready to go into our chapter. So we're in the book of Daniel and we're actually continuing with Daniel. Amen. So glad to see you, Sister Sheila. Amen. And we're continuing with the, uh, Daniel in the book of Daniel. But in this particular story, Daniel is not mentioned. Amen. Desiree, so always so glad to see you. Amen. Uh, so we, we find here that God is beginning to use those that are even in their youth to minister in their actions. This is talking about not only faith, but faith in your action. How are you demonstrating that you have faith in God? So sometimes when we have opposition, instead of demonstrating that we have faith in God, we do the exact opposite. We go into cussing, we go into ranting, we go into doing what we want to do and, and this, that, and the other. But look here, God is not looking for that. He's looking for us to come to him and say, God, even in the midst of my faith, fear and the midst, Lord God, of my life uh, uh, being jeopardized, God, I still want to know that my faith is going to sustain me. 
Look here, God is saying to us in this day and time, let your faith speak for you. You don't have to tell nobody nothing. You don't have to convince anybody anything. You do what the will of God is for your life. Now, we know on last week when they were before the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he was uh, uh, baiting them basically in a sense to become uh, part of the Babylonian kingdom. He wanted them to be a part of us because they were intelligent, that they were wise. But, but we find here that even in the beginning when he was testing them, that the trial did not stop there. And sometimes I, I fear that we think that, uh, that the trial and tribulation is going to stop at a particular point in time. No, the devil is always going to try to come for you, but know as long as you have a God that is for you, that will work through you and for you, amen, you don't have to fear the tactics of the devil. What you have to do is to trust and believe that God is a God who can make a way out of no way. I don't care what the king say. I don't care what the president say. I don't care what the boss say. My God is my source. My God is my redeemer. My God is my deliverer. Everything that I need for him to be for me, he is not only that, but he's there and some more. Hallelujah. So we start here in Daniel in the 13th chapter, I mean in the 3rd chapter starting with the 19th verse. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and facial expression uh, changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Look here, he's telling them, I am getting ready to consume you with the fire. Now look, God has a consuming fire. The devil thought that his fire was going to consume the children of God. But the devil is a liar on today. You will never, devil, be able to touch a hair on the head of a child of God just because you feel like you are able to do so. So let me back up just a second here. Uh, uh, God had, uh, had allowed a Shadrach and a Meshach and a Abednego to stand in their faith even in the midst of being taught and cultured by the Babylonian nation. So they come to them and tell them, they, they said, we make a decree that this is the God that you must serve. But they tell them, I will not serve an idol God. I know who God is. I know he's a living God. And because I know who he is, I can't, with all of my integrity, with all of my knowledge, with all of my understanding, I just cannot bow down to a God that I know is not true. I don't care what anybody say. No one can convince me that I should bow down to something that I do not believe in. But we find ourselves sometimes, uh, and I say we because we we, we try to uh, uh, we try to pacify things, and we don't want to offend anybody, and, and we don't want to say, well, you shouldn't serve that guy. We said everybody has a right to their belief. This is America. But look, you have to be bold enough to tell them. I don't care who you serve. The God that you serve is a false god. But the God that I serve is a, not only a living God. God, but he is the true God, the creator of all things. But and because of the, the fierceness of their faith, no matter what the devil tried to say, no matter how the devil tried to come up against them, they still stood on, I don't care, you can do what you do, but I still know who God is and I'm not bound down, I'm not bending down, I'm not praising, I'm not worshiping, I'm not eating the food of the devil. I am still a child of God. Look here, verse number number 20 says, he commanded certain strong men in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of a blazing fire. When you don't do what people want you to do, it's amazing to me how their countenance changed towards you. If you don't talk how they want, if you don't befriend who they want, if you don't like who they like, their countenance will change on you. This lets me know that even when the enemy is using people and you may think this is my friend and they like me and they love me and they accept me and this, that, and the other. You, you stand on the word of God. You tell people who God is. You show who your God is. And I guarantee you, you're going to see how people really feel about you. You don't have to bow down to them. All you got to say is, I'm not going to do it. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying what I'm not going to do. The countenance of the king changed. Not only did his countenance change, but we see here that his heart changed. So where he had found favor with them when he first brought them into captivity. He wanted to nurture them. He wanted to educate them. He wanted to bring them into the knowledge of who the Babylonian gods were. 
But when they did not change the way he wanted them to, his countenance fell. He looked like a fool because he thought, I'm the king. People do what I say, when I say, how I say. But because they, he, he knew in them who they were, he said, I know these kids. These kids right here, I'm going to have to get rid of them because, see, they standing up. They're setting up a standard. When you set up a standard of holiness and righteousness, the devil will try to consume you. He will try to take you down, but you let the fear of your faith say no matter what the devil says I still trust I still believe and I still stand on the word of God look here in verse number 25 he said look I see four no, let me go back up here I want to go to verse number 22 and it says here because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot. The flame of the fire killed the men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look here, Anita. Even when the enemy tries to take you down, God has a way of making the enemy be consumed by the fire that he set for you. You digging a hole for me, but God's digging one for you. So you may have thought that you were going to bring me down. You may have thought that you were going to war against me. You may have thought that you were going to belittle me and you were going to come against the God that I serve but look him the fire was so intense that the big strong men that he had said come and get Shadrach Meshach throw them in the fight they were consumed by the fire so look here what your enemies are and they think they taking you to be consumed know that God has the last say so don't be fearful don't be upset don't be mad at them you know what I'm going to let God take care of this because what you think you're going to do to me God's going to do to you so you'll be careful careful what you say about the children of God. You be careful what you say about the people of God. You be careful about what you say the church of God. Why? Because this is a covering that God has on them. So even when you think you're coming up against this, God said you're coming up against this. That this is him. My God. God is awesome in the wonders that he does because I, I love the fact that the enemies were consumed. They were consumed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have to fight. Their hands were tied up. Sometimes your hands are tied up. Sometimes you don't know how you're going to do what you do. You don't know how you're going to make it. Your hands are literally tied up. You can't move. You can't be uh, uh, do the activity that you desire to do. But God says, if you trust me, I'll do what needs to be done. Come on now, that's some good eating. As, as my friend Lonnie Day said, that's some good eating right there. If you trust God, he'll do what needs to be done. Your hands are tied. You don't know how. You don't know when. You don't know where. But God's going to show up and show out. Let's skip here down to verse number 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. God has a way of getting your attention. He has a way of letting you know who he is. He opens up the furnace thinking that everything is going to be consumed. The, not, not just the, the, the ones that he know, the men that he brought in that were consumed. He thinking that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be consumed. But God has a way of preserving you even in the midst of the fire and the midst of your storm, God has a way of keeping you. He has a way of covering you. And the covering that God puts over you, it's mighty, it's majestic, it's powerful. And all you got to do is just stay in that place. Stay humble before God. Don't fight them. Let God fight your battle for you. He opens up the door of the furnace and he begins to